So this is uh, Services Inception, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Yes, had to have the obligatory uh, cool uh, animated first slide. So I'm Dave McCrory, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, some interesting concepts around uh, applications and uh, and how they interface with uh, services, specifically in platform as a service. Uh, some of this is going to seem kind of uh, complicated. I'm hoping I can boil it down so that uh, you kind of watch it build on itself and uh, uh, hopefully at the end uh, we can have some uh, kind of almost a brainstorm session. I'm really looking for feedback around uh, what the best approach is conceptually to achieve this. Uh, so. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I'm sure you're all PHP programmers, right, and uh, you've done lots with WordPress. Uh, it, the concept behind what you do with WordPress when you get started and you click on a blog is effectively you get your own instance of a blog. So that's kind of, uh, you're getting something dynamically allocated to you uh, based on your request. So that's kind of the core of what all of this will end up being about. Uh, so. Uh, I, with the help of uh, with the help of Dr. Nick, actually tried to think of one of the easiest things that you've all probably done something like this uh, in the past, so it'd be easy to uh, to begin with. So, if you've heard about uh, uh, thirty four thousand apps uh, by Heroku in twenty four hours, uh, this is a way of doing that on demand with a curl request. Uh, so. If anybody wanted to loop through this 34,000 times, uh, you, could, you too could have 34,000 apps in, in 24 hours on Heroku. So if you've ever used platform as a service, and when I talk about platform as a service, I mean all the different platforms as a service that are out there. So I don't care who it is, if it's Heroku, Engine Yard, Cloud Foundry, if it's you name it, it doesn't matter. They, they're all effectively providing you a place to push your code and some type of uh, what, what I'm calling services that you can consume. Those services could be other applications, they could be databases or message queues or workers or whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all services ultimately and uh, I at least believe that in the future that's going to be one of the few things that differentiate all of these technologies anyway. It's going to be what services they provide and how they provide them. But effectively what happens is uh, you push your code up and you get an app uh, and the app ends up uh, having something uh, that's allocated to it, a set of resources. So that's where your app's deployed. The provider on the back end isn't just spinning up your app. Uh, it's probably spinning up something if you're putting a Rails app or something else out there like that. You're getting a MySQL instance or something else that's uh, spun up. Now an instance might be simply uh, a database instance where you're just uh, off to the side, or it could be an instance like a virtual machine or something else, but it's still a resource that's being allocated that you, can, that you can consume. And then ultimately your app is able to use whatever that resource happens to be. Um, in effect, it's the same thing as when we just saw the WordPress, right? It's, I'm spinning out a resource that you can use. In this case, I'm spinning out two, and then I'm connecting the two together. So setting the stage, so you'll see littered throughout this references to Inception in case you're curious. So you'll, you'll be tortured with that. Um, so like I said, the whole talk is specifically around uh, talking about the problems around PaaS. There are all sorts of ways to control these interfaces to these services and request provisionings to happen. Sometimes they're baked into the application and sometimes uh, you have a greater level of control. Sometimes you have less level of control, but you do have control. So from a command line with most of the platforms that I can think of at least, you can create a service or you can push an additional capability or an app or you can turn a capability on or off, which is really handy. Um, so it, it's interesting in the fact that, and I'm not going to read any of this to you, I'm not going to torture you like that, but uh, what happens is their dependencies when you push an app out onto one of these platforms. And I don't mean dependencies as in Ruby gems or libraries or however you want to look at it like that. I'm talking about the service dependencies. So you depend on these other things. It could be Redis or Mongo or MySQL or it could be, you know, 
AMQP, it could be, you name it. it. These are dependencies. They're just dependencies on either other servers, other applications, or, or other services that exist. Somebody has to set those services up. Not all of it's automatic. Um, you do get an instance uh, with somebody like Heroku. You, you get a Postgres instance these days, I think, on Cedar. Uh, so you do get, uh, you do get it, some resources for free. So